Hey there folks, this is Dan here with CLV Boost. In today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that I get an awful lot and that I'm forced to answer when we work one-to-one uh, -one with clients, which is, how do we pick the right marketing automation software? Almost always a, a, a full sort of build out of a company's email marketing or marketing automation strategies is going to involve this question first if they don't already have a software that they're married to. So if you're watching this, you're either getting your marketing automation off the ground with a current business or you're looking to switch over to a different tool, maybe because you're with something that's not robust enough or you're with something that's maybe a little bit too complex. Either way, these three questions will help you to sort of whittle down your options for who the right vendors and providers might be and also help you think through a little bit uh, more of how to glean immediate ROI from these softwares once you actually purchase them. So uh, without further ado, we'll go into our first question here being, uh, in an ideal world, what would marketing automation or how would marketing automation improve your bottom line? Uh, for some folks who are listening into this right now, the answer is really simple. Maybe you're a direct response email marketing, marketing automation business, and so much of your bottom line is driven by uh, sending out email offers. So very much, it's a, a very, very short line between sending emails and driving revenue, and it might be that uh, in an ideal world, marketing automation would help improve your bottom line by, let's say, segmenting your your uh, your marketing promotions so that the right promotions are going to the right people. For other folks, uh, maybe marketing automation would improve your bottom line um, because it would help you book more appointments. Uh, maybe marketing automation would help your bottom line because it would help you with a newsletter to engage all of your old contacts and new contacts and sort of stay in their world and continue to educate them and update them in a way that hopefully will garner ongoing business as well as sort of ongoing relevance in their inbox. Um, whatever the case may be, really thoroughly think through what could do. Um, if you had messages and maybe phone call reminders going out at the right times over time, how, how you know, in, what would need to happen in order for, uh, for, for your bottom line to be lifted by marketing automation? It's not just, uh, so it's the, the, the default uh, statement to self for business owner or whoever the marketer is, um, is, hey, everybody's doing email. Shucks, you know, we should really do that email stuff. That's really not the, 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 the way to come about this. The way to come about this is how, tangibly how, Will marketing automation improve our bottom line? If you're listening in right now, again, maybe it's helping with upselling your existing customers who are buying smaller products to help them buy bigger products or other products or bundles of products. Um, so maybe it's it's kind of an upsell, cross-sell opportunity that you have. Whatever the case may be, really flesh out and potentially jot down on a piece of paper what would be all of the things that in an ideal world marketing automation could do for you that would help your bottom line. The reason we start here before we go into who are the right vendors, uh, you know, what, which companies, you know, Infusionsoft, ActiveCampaign, Pardot, whatever the case may be, the reason we start here is because we have to validate this purchase. If you're listening to this and you're in a larger organization, let's say you're the marketing person or you're some kind of IT person in marketing, then you know darn well that you're going to have to validate this purchase with return on investment. If you're an entrepreneur running a smaller business, the same rules have to apply. We have to do this to be net positive. That's, that's why we're in business here. So how would marketing automation move your bottom line? Again, would it help you book more appointments? Would it send out automated campaigns to all the people that didn't show out to appointments so that it could um, book further appointments with those dropouts? Right now, maybe you don't have the time or the attention to pay to all those sort of lower quality leads or, or lower quality prospects, but you had a system that could do it automatically and book those appointments for you um, or, or you know, get those people to call in and book appointments by sending out automatic messages. Wouldn't that just be better. So whatever, whatever, however marketing automation could move your bottom line, write those down in a list for yourself. Next, um, what features and functionality would be required in order to fulfill this role? So um, for example, if you are looking to, let's say, split test your automation sequence, so you have a very important, let's say, newsletter or core kind of front-end automation sequence for your business. Everybody who opts in receives a specific tailored series of emails. If you want to segment those emails based on lead source or based on one of their goals or based on location or whatever the case may be, there are some marketing automation software that don't really allow you to add a drop-down to that 
uh, to that web form and actually permit people to be sent down a different sequence based on their own selection. In some businesses, segmentation is rather important. And if you do need that, then you should write down, well, we'll need segmentation on the front end. Um, similarly speaking, there's some automation software, some lightweight ones, I should say. Uh, a lot of the folks listening in here, I can imagine, are in the small business world. Um, folks who are, who are uh, in, in kind of the lightweight um, marketing automation space, there's many programs that don't really permit uh, certain kinds of automation. So let's say someone clicks on a particular um, link uh, or purchases a particular product. There's some programs that make it very difficult to take that purchase or take that click and turn it automatically into sending someone down a different funnel for a different sequence of messages. So uh, we'll want to write down that as a functionality. If somehow you need a system that also ties into uh, something that your sales folks can use. So you need a system that also can trigger phone calls to sales staff and maybe fill up what, what might be kind of a to-do list or a task list for either front desk staff or sales staff or things like that. Then there's uh, that's a consideration that you need to have. You need to have this tie into the phone game in addition to just the email game. For many of you who actually have businesses that involves, let's say, selling on the phone or selling in person, uh, you, you can't get all that done with email. You're going to want uh, an automation, uh, an email automation software, uh, marketing automation software that has some kind of a dashboard with a task list that a front desk person or a salesperson can look down. It can trigger when to call. Hey, this, this person uh, didn't show up to their meeting yesterday. Let's give them a call and book them. Or, hey, this person just bought this product. Let's call them and see if they're interested in these other two products. If you don't have a dashboard to do that and you have to do that part by hand, you're probably giving yourself an automation uh, software that's not quite a fit and not robust enough for your own business needs. So based on how marketing automation could bolster your bottom line, what would be the, the essentially the necessary capacities and functionality of that software. What would it be? So really map it out. I just gave you a few examples. You know, the, the necessity of the sales staff, the necessity of the front desk staff, uh, the necessity of click and purchase based automation triggers, uh, the necessity to have a, a drop down menu where people can select among different options and have those different options dictate a different automation sequence that they get put into. Um, Similarly speaking, if you're uh, a, a business that's sophisticated enough to be split testing your digital marketing, which if you're big enough or you're small and scrappy enough, you're certainly doing, um, there are some automation uh, softwares, marketing automation software, that, that do not actually permit, at least not easily, they don't permit you to split test your automation sequences uh, on the front end. So if you want to send people down a core marketing funnel and you want to know which version of this funnel converts the most prospects into buyers and you want to automatically split that traffic so you can put half of them down one funnel, half of them down another, there are some software that really make that difficult. And it's a darn shame for the people that love split testing because it's, in some cases that could potentially be the wrong software altogether if they can't do the testing that they need. So in addition to writing down how marketing automation tangibly would improve your bottom line, write down the functionality that would be required in order to get that return on investment in order to make that money from this software and make this a worthwhile investment not just a everybody else is using email and so will I kind of a purchase here and then lastly ask yourself what software platforms will scale with my business so uh, if, if you're like the rest of the folks that tune into the CLV calls or enjoy our online Academy or have worked with us one-on-one -on -one, um, you're likely looking to grow and uh, if you have serious growth goals you may in fact uh, outgrow the marketing automation software that you are using or that you're looking to select in the near term. So if you know that in the long term you're going to start to offer um, more services to your e-commerce business that you're, you're going to actually involve sort of some degree of consulting service, then you may have to get yourself in on a software that can also integrate easily into some kind of a sales dashboard. Um, if you're if you're never going to move into something with a more consultative angle, then maybe you don't need to consider that. Similarly speaking, um, you might be in a business that in in the next two three years might 
uh, have an influx of hundreds of thousands of, of leads, hundreds of thousands of, of, of email addresses, in which case there are going to be some software more fitted to segmenting and sending out large volumes of traffic than others. So there's some software that you're really going to be kind of small time when it comes to how many emails can you send while still having decent deliverability and others that are better. Um, so if, if, you're, if you're working with kind of a small fry uh, software, um, when ultimately you're going to need something a lot more robust in the future to deal with the massive volume that you may take in, then you probably want to consider that earlier rather than later so you can purchase something that you can grow into. These are uh, additional important considerations. Um, just to talk through a couple potential software, if you're, if you're in a very, very small business, then you may be considering sort of AWeber or uh, MailChimp. These are, these are really sort of very, very, very small business software. Um, generally speaking, they're also for folks that aren't necessarily uh, interested in, in very complex automation. They just want a simple newsletter. They want a relatively low price, and that's essentially what would make them happy. If, if that is where you are now, and that's where you want to be in the future, uh, then those options might work well for you. Uh, in you know, in, in other scenarios, you might want to go with a lightweight solution that has a little bit more capacity, such as uh, active campaigns, such as Get Drip, which is another sort of um, lightweight but still relatively robust uh, marketing automation tool. A little bit of a step above that in terms of complexity would be Entreport, and, and above that would be Infusionsoft. Um, and then when you get above Infusionsoft, you start looking at sort of the big boy tools. The big boy tools being being uh, uh, tools like Exact Target and Pardot and Marketo uh, and HubSpot. HubSpot's a little bit below some of those um, in terms of complexity and price. But you start you start playing with kind of the big boys. Um, so depending on where you are in your business growth, depending on where you want to be. Um, you'll want to make different decisions about sort of which software you purchase. So probably the, the, best, the best likelihood of g gaining a, an immediate ROI uh, and, as well as a long-term ROI in your marketing automation software, write down how it could be profitable for you. Write, now the, write down the necessary functions and then um, take into consideration your two to three year sort of projections here and where you're going to be, never mind where you are now, and ensure that you pick a software that fits those three needs. If you do that, you're very unlikely to have regrets about what you pick. Uh, if you'd like any help on this particular topic, you can always email us, info at clvboost.com. Happy to help. Otherwise, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Make a comment down below if you have any questions as well, and feel free to suggest any other topics you'd like us to cover in the future.